California State Highway 39 is a disheveled, abandoned stretch of roadway that has become a notorious destination for urban explorers. And it's no wonder why, with a bridge to nowhere, sections destroyed by landslides, and eerie signs of decay, this lost piece of infrastructure captivates the imagination. So why would California close an important stretch of road in 1978 and simply leave it to rot? Join me to find out, as today we discover the history of California's lost highway. I'm your host, Ryan Sokash, and you're watching It's History. The first roads of California were designed for horses and carriages made by people migrating into the territory. But when it was granted statehood in 1850, there was a push for road modernization. One of the biggest suggestions came in 1855 for a road from Sacramento Valley to Carson Valley in Nevada. From there, the state legislator passed a bill ordering the Surveyor General to seek out a good wagon passage over the Sierra Nevada mountains. This eventually became the Lake Tahoe Wagon Road, which later became U.S. Route 50. In 1895, the state legislator created the Bureau of Highways out of the Lake Tahoe Wagon Road Commissioner, as well as the Bureau of Highways Commissioner. This three-office organization traveled to all the counties in the state, intending to draft a map for a recommended system of roads. After the document submission, the state replaced the Bureau of Highways with the Department of Highways, which would later become the California Department of Transportation, otherwise known as Caltrans. With the turn of the century, the state amended its constitution to allow the establishment of state highways and permission to pass the required laws to build them. After being put to the people and approved in 1910, the state issued $18 million in bonds to finance a highway system to connect all of the county seats. Construction began in 1912, though the project needed more funding, and hence another bill was passed in 1916 to add $12 million, allowing for the completion of the original system and $3 million for a 680-mile extension. At this point, the roads were numbered from 1 to 34, a system that remained in place until 1964, when the numbers were reassigned. After a third bond issue put another $20 million into the routes, further funding was collected through a two-cent-per-gallon gasoline tax approved in 1923. In that decade, the state highway system grew exponentially, passing legislation to expand the scope of the project to all traversable highways in the state and to build highways through smaller cities that could not afford them. Now, with the entire state in focus, California's highway system began construction on 23 new routes in 1931. Some extensions, other entirely new routes, numbered 72 to 80. However, this was nothing compared to what was to come. In 1933, the legislator amended the State Highway Classification Act of 1927, which added another 6,700 miles of county roads to the state highway system. These were to be classified as secondary highways, but would be funded equally to the primary ones. This increased the network to another 213 sections of highway in 1933, nearly doubling the length of the state highways, totaling 14,000 miles. The last assigned numbers went from 80 to 202, and many were extensions of other routes. Among the highways created by this bill was California State Route 39, which we will return to. For context, when the Golden Gate Bridge was completed in 1937, it was not integrated into the state highway system. Instead, being designed, constructed, maintained, and still owned by the Golden Gate Bridge Highway and Transportation District. Ten years later, revenue began being directed towards the construction of freeways in urban areas, which would become of particular note to Route 39. By 1957, a plan for a statewide freeway and expressway system was submitted to the legislator. They approved the construction of 12,241 miles of controlled access highways, serving every city with a population greater than 5,000. And remarkably, this system would carry over half of the state's traffic at the time. 
1963 was a revolutionary year for the California State Highway System. Between that time and the following year, an enormous project to renumber the routes in the system went underway. The routes marked for the public, which were the most widely traveled ones, were unchanged, meaning Route 39 maintained its number. The legislative routes that were marked differently than the state-signed route numbers were integrated into the same system that the main routes used. As this was a massive restructuring task, it was implemented almost a year after it was passed in 1963, first taking effect on July the 1st, 1964, marking the last major note on the freeway system. As after the merger of the Department of Public Works and the Department of Aeronautics that created the California Department of Transportation, the scope of transit expanded to not only the highway system, but for all public transportation. So now that we've gone over the history of the state highway system, we can get into Route 39 and why it is not what it was planned to be. In 1934, Route 39 was signed along the route from Route 1 near Huntington Beach to Route 2 near Valiermo via Covina, and most of these plans were realized in construction that same year. However, this was not what ended up happening. Namely, the road only runs up to La Habra, then turns right onto what was once Route 72, before being reassigned to Route 39 in 1981. But after a short drive, Route 39 vanishes entirely for several miles until restarting at West Covina. This is clearly not what was intended to happen at the time, as 1939 maps of the route include the planned freeway between La Habra and Route 10 in Azusa. It's unclear what happened to delay construction, as Route 39 signs were placed along the planned route right up to the mid-1960s. Plans elaborated on the freeway to connect the two areas, but they fell flat. Eventually, Los Angeles County signed the non-state highway gap as its own route, supplanting the state plans as a result. And especially after the renumbering in 1965, plans for linking Route 39 were simply unnecessary and convoluted. Route 39 resumes at Interstate 10 in West Covina along Azusa Avenue, continuing north into the mountains before terminating at Crystal Lake Recreation Area. However, the plans outlined the road to continue ahead, connecting to Route 2 via San Gabriel Canyon. Well, it was a difficult route to construct, the connection with Route 2 was constructed by the direct order of President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1957, and it was open to the public for a time. But in 1978, a powerful storm swept through the area. Normally, that wouldn't be much of an issue. However, this segment of Route 39 ran through the San Gabriel Mountains. It's a notoriously difficult area to navigate, hence why construction was so slow from approval in 1934 to completion in 1957. The main road running through it is Route 2, as mentioned, but there is one other, the Angeles Forest Highway. So basically, Route 39 was a third road in this area, until the storm hit. The storm that swept through in 1978 prompted an enormous landslide that damaged the road beyond usability. Now, this part of Route 39 was no stranger to landslides. It had been temporarily closed several times due to them. However, the storm was different. The landslide here tore away large portions of the highway, sending pavement, culverts, and drain pipes down into the valley below. Some areas were left down to mere dirt and paths. Some have called this shoddy engineering, but it can also be ascribed to the structure being in a very temperamental environment. Another difficulty of the road is that it runs through the Angeles National Forest, a habitat featuring wetlands and an air and water quality that maintains threatened plants and animal species, to say nothing of the forest itself. Regardless, this served the line of transportation through the mountain range. In order to travel to Mount Waterman from Route 39, you now need to head west to State Route 2, which is a two-hour trip itself. This insane detour is the exact reason that Caltrans reopened the segment exclusively to emergency crews in February of 2003, reconnecting this part of the road 
has always been a priority for Caltrans, and reconstruction efforts went underway again in the early 2000s, but yet another landslide hit the area in 2005, damaging the road again beyond feasible reconstruction and forcing the state to fold to Mother Nature once again. After this, Caltrans put forward a plan to reconstruct the culverts and construct new retaining walls, as well as install new metal beam guardrails and widen the shoulder at the Route 39 and Route 2 intersection, all while maintaining drainage inlets. They also proposed four alternatives. This first is to maintain the existing conditions without any improvements, which would essentially keep the road shut. The second alternative proposed rehabilitation for the roadway and roadside facilities, reconstructing the damaged roadway section using geosynthetic reinforcement, mechanically stabilizing the land, and replacing the damaged terrain. The third alternative is to add the second option to a bridge where the most damage occurred, allowing any future rock slide debris to simply fall under the roadway. The final alternative proposed the most damaged area to be realigned 16 feet towards the downslope by building an 890-foot mechanically stabilized earth wall along the roadway on the downslope side to support the realignment. Despite this project supposedly being fully funded in April of 2009, it was dropped by October of 2011 due to the rising costs and engineering challenges. But beyond that, the biggest roadblock was apparently a mandate to protect bighorn sheep in the area that construction would have inevitably disturbed. And as they are a protected species, the plans were outright canceled. As of December 2022, Caltrans has been considering repairing the closed gap to reopen the connection to Route 2, which has been closed for nearly 50 years. This hasn't been the only attempt, as there were several projects in the late 2000s and throughout the 2010s that went under due to budgetary concerns. Even so, this is an area that the state legislator seems set on reopening eventually. Route 39 was not originally going to be the only connection from the Los Angeles area to State Route 2. Indeed, there was intended to be another, but it met a fate worse than that of Route 39's northernmost connection. This is known as East Fork Road, aka the Bridge to Nowhere. East Fork Road began construction in 1936, but development stalled shortly after it began. Before it could restart in earnest, the area was flooded. The Los Angeles flood of 1938 was caused by two Pacific storms hitting the area at once. Between February and March of 1938, a year's worth of water poured over the area in the span of a few days. This catastrophe forced the reconstruction of the East Fork Road to be entirely abandoned, with the most significant remnant being a single arch bridge built over the East Fork of the San Gabriel River, just upstream from where Route 39 currently ends. Now only accessible by a 10-mile round-trip hike, the Bridge to Nowhere has become a popular landmark for adventurers of all types. However, the trails are still frequently flooded out and subject to landslides and rockfalls, which have accumulated in a large number of deaths in and around the area, mostly attributed to the swift and rapidly rising water of the San Gabriel River. Despite these risks and the rockfall in May of 2015 that officially closed the trail, it remains a popular location for visitors to the area. Despite all of the issues with the northernmost section of Route 39, the southern section is a vital transit artery for the Los Angeles area. Anything that close to the coast in California is bound to be a well-traveled road. Route 39 is no exception. And that's not to say that the northern section has not had its time in the spotlight, as it was used for filming in the 2006 action movie, The Fast and Furious. Tokyo Drift, where it appears as a part of the race down the mountain pass in the finale of the movie. So while highways are typically long stretches of road meant for unbroken travel, the exception that proves the rule is not necessarily negative in the case of Route 39 at least when it comes to the movies. 
Hopefully one day it will be reconnected with Route 2 and finally fulfill its potential and purpose. So I suppose we'll just have to wait and see what happens. And until then, I'm Ryan Sokash, signing off.